Hey, howdy, and good morning. Man, do I have a story for you. And we've had so much stuff going on. You see the deal, right? We've got the Carlon, we've got Romex, and I did a YouTube short on the 11th of July, if you want to go back, and it was about the consequences of this, this idea that we run, even if we peel it, the, the Romex, and strip off the sheath and run outside conduit, um, there's long term there's problems uh, before we go further than that i want to say thank you we just turned the corner on 3,000 subscribers once again I, i'm always amazed every time it's like 3,000 people watch this that's fantastic and then i'm a little bit like i feel kind of sad they're not doing anything else with their lives <laughs> i'm joking i'm joking i love the interaction that we have and the regular people who comment and uh, I, le I learn a bunch I learn a bunch, even from you guys who are smart, Alex, and you know who you are. You guys make me learn, and that's good. Back to the story. So a lot of times you guys are reaching out to me and say, hey, can I do this and this? <clears throat> so let's just set this clear and give you some references, because I'm not going to give you permission, if you want to call it that, to do something that's not code compliant or unsafe, regardless if it's easy for you or cheaper. I, I don't care. Not my thing. And this is social media. You're going to make your choice. So, the code references are, of course, Article 334 for Romex, Article 110, especially 12 for workmanship, um, and then Article 100 for definitions, especially when it comes to damp and wet locations, okay? Those three, any question you have about Romex and installation inside, outside, how, it's in those three articles, okay? 334, 110, Article 100. Okay, go there. Here's the story. I get an old friend of mine, hadn't talked to him for months. It goes, James, I'm having problems with my AC unit. Went out, troubleshooting it. He's trying to fix it himself, which I think is brave because he has zero electrical background. He's got the panel open. He's working the panel. Still alive. Guardian Angels are doing their job for that young man. So finally, we're tracing it from the panel out. And I finally use my meter and ohm out the whip. It's a Carlon whip, very similar to this, right? Three quarter inch Carlon. It's got, I think, uh, eight two in there. And you'll see that in the video. And finally, I'm getting an intermittent short. I pulled the whip out of the, the J box on the side of the AC unit. And I put my ohm meter on there, ohm it out from ground to one of the hots. And I'm getting intermittent uh, continuity, which you should never have continuity from ground to hot. So in any case, so then I start moving the whip around where, from where it goes into the wall, and I move it five degrees one way, and now I have continuity solid between ground and that face. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, where are we touching? So then I pull the whip, and it just comes out of the wall. And then a bunch of this brown, thick fluid, maybe it was water in the past, comes kind of running out, and I pull on that whip, and the Romex comes out of the brick a little bit, and then you'll see in that video, if you look close, it wasn't the best as far as picture, but where somebody had stripped off the sheath of the Romex and then sleeved it in Carlon, maybe 25 years ago there was just a nick. But because there was water there as well, it had basically boiled and cooked and burned down. So there was about a one inch section of the phase, the hot, exposed. The insulation was gone. And so what had happened is either through the water or the movement of the bare ground wire, it was touching. Okay, and at some point it had bonded because for a while he couldn't reset the breaker at all. It was just a dead short. So we cut that off. He's going to seal the hole. We just ran a new whip from the disconnect outside the wall into uh, the AC. Worked great. So point of the story is that house I looked it up was built 25 years ago. That's a long time. So here's my question. If you look at Article 110.12 and those other uh, paragraphs in Article 110 on workmanship and uh, standards, how long should your work last? So my friend Bill, he didn't have any, question, any problems with that AC until maybe a month ago, a week ago. Anyway, it was recent. So he had basically 24 years, as far as the electrical was concerned, of no problem. So my question to you guys in terms of without, what's your standard for workmanship? 
how long when you're doing electrical work do you want it to last? So there is, we have idealists, we'll say over here on the spectrum, that is forever, which is cool. We have the other end, a little grubbier, <laughs> until it's the, we call it the taillight warranty. Once I drive away and they don't see me, after that I don't care, which is the other extreme, right? So somewhere in the middle, how long should your work last? Because that drives your methods. Work should always be done to code and be safe. Okay, always, always, regardless of the difficulty, the cost, time on Friday, the heat, doesn't matter, do it. But my question is, when you're tightening down a termination, when you're pulling wire, when you're snugging up a lock nut, how long do we want that work to last? That is the real answer, whatever you come up with. That's the real answer to questions like, should I run Romex through Carlon outside? You guys, click like, subscribe. I am absolutely looking forward to your answers and responses. Um, I always learn stuff, and you guys are a lot of fun. I'll talk to you soon.